Welcome, Joyger, and welcome to episode 3 of Brutally Honest Reactions, where I go and react to your favorite NFT and crypto influencer's most viral video. Today's episode is on Elio Trades, a YouTube channel with over 500,000 subscribers, one of the most well-known NFT and crypto YouTubers in the game. This guy's been uploading YouTube videos about crypto and NFTs for so long, it's crazy. He knows so much stuff, and this video is so interesting because if you watch him now in 2021, you're going to notice so many similarities to how he talked in 2019. So this guy someone you want to listen to for strategy for advice you don't want to listen to his exact calls because he's he's playing in a different game than you but you definitely want to be paying attention to the things he talks about in his video and we're going to get into it today so his most viral video is you are being lied to about bitcoin don't be fooled cuban gates o'leary conspire against crypto August 20, August 14th, 2019, over 500,000 views, 15,000 likes. In our last Brutally Honest Reaction video, we cover Journey Crypto. And next, I'm probably going to let my Discord decide. Link in the description below. I may also ask my Twitter, so that's also in the description below. Anyways, if you guys are excited to be entertained while also learning a thing or two, smash a like in this video. It only takes one second. We got videos coming out every single day. I appreciate it. And subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Bell notification on, and let's get into the video. And guys, before we get started in this video, I have a big announcement to make. Yesterday on my Twitter, I alluded to the fact that if NFT projects are going to want to survive this winter bear market, they're going to have to find content creators to partner up with to remain relevant during the bear markets because it'd be a lot easier. Influencers are a lot more flexible and that's a great way to maintain just hype demand and relevancy in the market. So I'm very happy to announce that Subducks will be sponsoring the channel. Subducks times Joyage Kingdom. You guys know how picky I am with NFT projects, so I'm only going to partner with the ones that I think have a great long-term vision and are implementing things that are going to work in the long term, the right things, focusing on the right things. That's where my brand's headed. I'm only going to partner with projects that make sense with that. So yes, moving forward, Subducks and I will be collaborating. I have no idea what the future will hold between us. I don't know if there's going to be like giveaways or whatnot, but I just wanted to let you guys know that we have our first sponsor on the channel. Thank you so much to the Subdex team. Thank you guys for getting me here and let's get on with this video. That may have come out wrong. Subdex doesn't need me, but it's a good way to maintain. I just meant it's just an extra thing to maintain relevancy. First they ignore you, then they laugh at you, then they fight you, and then you win. Famous words from Mahatma Gandhi that I find more relevant today in this current phase of Bitcoin's revolution than almost any other. When I woke up today, I saw the headline that the Mavericks become second NBA team to accept Bitcoin for tickets and merchandise. And I couldn't help but think of this phrase. And that's because right now there is something almost sinister happening in this Bitcoin revolution. Something that we're going to try to shed some light on today. And to me, it spells one of the most bullish, most important turning points in this whole movement that is Bitcoin and cryptocurrency. Guys, Elio is a fucking master at storytelling. I love the way he talks. He, it just sounds like a fucking fantasy like world, the way he talks. He gets you so excited about crypto. This is one of his key traits as to how he's grown his YouTube channel because the way he talks, I've actually taken some of his tactics and applied them to my own videos because they're so effective. Just making you feel confident, making you feel, you feel good about being here watching his video. And I already feel I have good vibes right now just watching his video. What's going on, FUD Nation, and welcome back. Today, we're going to be opening your eyes to how you're being actively lied to. I'm sorry. What is this green screen? <laughs> what the fuck is that? It's just like a random drone video. Never mind. This is... <laughs> okay. About Bitcoin on a global scale by some of the biggest thought leaders in the world. And of course, if you always want to know the truth, you should follow the money. So follow me on this journey of finding out what the biggest, most influential figures in the financial world are doing versus what they are saying about Bitcoin. God, now, briefly returning back to this Mavericks news, as they said, the Mavs will utilize the service provider BitPay to process all Bitcoin purchases. BitPay, the largest Bitcoin processor in the world, offers the Dallas Mavs global fans a seamless experience to purchase tickets and merchandise with the Bitcoin cryptocurrency. Now, this might not seem like big news unless you've been following what Mark Cuban has been saying about Bitcoin. I hate gold. Gold is a religion. There's abs there's some some fundamental value to gold, but everything else, it's, it's a collectible. I, I see gold and Bitcoin as being the same thing. So gold is useless and gold and Bitcoin are the same thing. Yet, as the owner of the Mavs cryptocurrency, you're going to start accepting Bitcoin in exchange for tickets and merchandise. And this is why it's important that you don't really pay attention to news, news articles, FUD. Guys, look, Bitcoin's not going anywhere. Crypto's not going anywhere. It doesn't fucking matter if 
whatever happens the crypto will be here okay so every time it just crashes just fucking relax okay you didn't lose any money it's always gone up bitcoin is the highest performing asset in the last i think 20 years or 10 or 20 years whatever it is of all the asset classes again you can listen to what they're saying or follow what they're doing with their money and i find that the latter is by far the more important of the two we don't have to go very far back in history to find an example of mark cuban saying that bitcoin was a good investment if you're a true adventurer and you really want to throw the Hail Mary, you might take 10% and put it in Bitcoin or Ethereum. So Mark Cuban thinks gold and Bitcoin are useless, yet he believes that you should put potentially 10% of your money inside that asset, as well as he's now accepting it for tickets and merchandise for his professional basketball team, the Dallas Mavericks. Again, follow the money, not what they're saying. But he's not the only one. If we go back a few years ago, we can find... And there's a lot of people who watch this video, and I guarantee you are thinking about like the details of what just happened like maybe being like oh my god he's such an asshole or he's so this he's so that and like getting caught up in little things the main message here that you've gotten so far in the video at least that i've gotten that i think is the most important message is to not look at the news and just follow the markets and that's why market analysis is so important because there's no emotions there's no bullshit in the market the market can't lie it just either went up or it went down and that's just it's just an easier way to invest a lot less you know taxing in your mental because you're not sitting there wondering if you know bitcoin's going to go to zero tomorrow if there's like a china article or whatever bill gates talking very positively about bitcoin and digital currencies as a way to bank the unbanked among other very positive attributes as you put it makes me think believe it or not of bitcoin because some people have said hey bitcoin is the answer to those problems are you a believer well bitcoin is exciting because it shows how cheap it can be uh, Bitcoin is is better than currency in that uh, you don't have to ha be physically in the same place. And of course, for large transactions, currency can, can get pretty inconvenient. So all of three years ago, we have Bill Gates saying that Bitcoin is more useful than currency in various ways. Wouldn't it surprise you to find out that only a few months later, he joined Warren Buffett and Charlie Munger in calling Bitcoin useless garbage. On Bitcoin, do you own any? Somebody gave me some for my birthday. <laughs> uh, and then a few years later, I thought, hey, I'm gonna- I don't know why I think every, every time I see like Warren Buffett, I'm just like, bro, why are you still doing money? Like, why you're so old, bro? Like, what are you doing? Like, he must just fucking, just i don't even know he must just love looking at markets or he's addicted to money or something because this dude is old this shit is so funny i'm just like like once you've been doing it for so long i'm like is there anything else you want to do or maybe he's done other things i don't know that's just my my knee-jerk reaction if you're in my discord there's an ama section where you can put any question you want you might get a chance to get featured on the channel martin 89 thank you for your question his question was friends seinfeld or the office and i'm gonna have to go with friends friends first Seinfeld second and The Office third. I sell that, so no. <laughs> uh, there's some really good technology in terms of sharing databases and verifying transactions uh, that is talked about as blockchain. That is a good thing. Bitcoin and ICOs, I agree completely. Uh, it's one of the crazier speculative things where it's not as a, as a an asset class you're not producing anything uh and so you shouldn't expect it to go up uh, it's it's kind of a pure greater fool theory type uh investment um so you know i i i agree i would i would short it if there was an easy way to do it So once again, 2016 Bill Gates thinks Bitcoin is better than currency and an amazingly disruptive technology, very useful for banking the unbanked, among other things. Now, Bitcoin- Yeah, it does make you think, like, why did he say that? You know, I. that is interesting that that happens a lot. You know, they'll say something and they'll do the opposite. And I'm sitting there and I'm like, I really think they're a good person. But now I'm like, are you a piece of shit? You know, like, that's, that's, so, like, that's so scummy, you know, but like- Every rich person does that, and I'm just like, bro, don't you have enough money? Like, why are you scamming your own supporters? You know, that's kind of fucked. But I, I don't know, dude. I don't, I don't know. Maybe it's whatever. Bitcoin 
has some good technology behind it, but is completely speculative and is a greater fool theory investment that Bill Gates wishes he could short. Ironically, at the time, he could have shorted it, but <laughs> I don't think he did. And Mark Cuban and Bill Gates are certainly not the only ones. My good friends Austin and Aaron over at Altcoin Daily just created an awesome video that you should go check out if you haven't already seen it, where they show how Kevin O'Leary has a very secret Bitcoin past. Now let's look at that same clip of Kevin O'Leary being extremely bullish on cryptocurrencies back in 2013 before flipping the script almost entirely in this modern bull run. Just remember that until yesterday, most people around the world never heard of Bitcoin. Bitcoin, for those who don't know it, is basically virtual currency, the right. same that you get for blasting aliens in a video game, except now traded globally. You can buy Bitcoins with virtually any currency on Earth and convert back into any currency or buy goods and services well, with Well, we it. talked about the story. What really got us talking about Bitcoin was the guy in Edmonton who was selling his house for the first time one of 400,000 in Bitcoins. So uh, I think the, the best way to look at this, this is a proxy for the mistrust individuals have of central bankers. If you're willing to take Bitcoin as a currency, a virtual Barbie currency to me, uh, it, it has no basis, no central banker, no hard asset behind it. Honestly, I'm actually surprised that there was people talking about it on live television, like their national television like this in 2013. Because there's, there wasn't like there was YouTubers talking about it who like knew things back in 2013. Like there's only a few, I bet. And, and of the few, there probably wasn't that many viewers because people just weren't into it. I remember a guy did a speech for it in like uh, 2015, 2016, 2017 on Bitcoin. I remember he was kind of a sketchy looking dude. And I was like, man, I don't know about this thing. It sounds like scam or it sounds like illegal shit. And damn, was I wrong? If I just spent 10 minutes researching, probably... <laughs> But if you don't trust any other currency, this is where you go. So it is essentially what's happening here, Heather, people all around the world are saying, I've had it with my central banker. I don't trust politicians anymore. I'm going to trade with this currency with my computer and my cell phone. Well, they did that. The reason the Bitcoin shot up was after Cyprus, when they thought the government was going to get the hands on sure. the money in the bank. So people turned to Bitcoins to keep them protected. So I ignore everything till it gets to a billion dollars of market cap. Okay. That happened recently with bitcoin well over a billion in value so it's here to stay when you've accumulated a virtual worth of a billion dollars and people are willing to trade it and actually buy things with it turn it back into hard assets and here's the key heather owners of hard assets are willing to take bitcoin this is here to stay that's what's going to happen and no central banker can control it so again mr wonderful now in 2013 hmm. very early comparatively to the others in the movement praising Bitcoin on a variety of merits. It's decentralization, it being accepted for almost any fiat currency around the world, how you can trade it for hard assets. He really outlines the whole argument for Bitcoin in this one video. So wouldn't it surprise you that now six years later, he doesn't seem to understand these things at all. Now, which is illegal, by the way, but to me, it's garbage. Try and do a transaction over $100,000 of Bitcoin. I tried to do some real estate in Switzerland with it once. It is a useless currency. It is a useless currency. I, that's what I believe. I mean, look, I'm not, you know, I, I realize people have different opinions, but to me, it's garbage. And because you can't, you is can't, it doo -doo? I mean, you can't get in and out of it in large amounts. And everybody says, yes, you can. But what happens is the receiver wants some guarantee. Let's say you want to buy a piece of real estate for $10 million in Switzerland. Let's just say. Just let's just say. Yeah. And they don't want to use the traditional transfer system, all right? Mm -hmm. now, which is illegal, by the way, because it's, you have to disclose while you're transferring $10 million over Switzerland. They want to guarantee that the value comes back to U.S. currency at 10. You have to somehow hedge the risk of Bitcoin. That means it's not a real currency. That means the receiver is not willing to take the risk of the volatility it has. It's worthless. 2013, Kevin, very bullish on Bitcoin at just a billion dollars in total market cap. Now we have Bitcoin at multi-hundred billion dollars. Yeah, I was going to say that like that logic makes no sense. Now there's way more volume being traded. And his argument is that it's not possible to trade because no one's doing it. Yet there's so much, so many transactions. Like, what is he talking about? Weird. Their market caps. And yet the bull case is now gone. It's now illiquid and impossible to get your money in and out of, or quote, useless. See how things change as the game gets bigger and more real. But Kevin's not done. He's on a Bitcoin rampage. Just check out this more recent clip when he's discussing it on Squawk Box with Anthony Pompliano. I want to explore the idea that there is nothing here except raw speculation. Mm -hmm. No different than when I go to Las Vegas and put my money on black or red on a roulette wheel because 
Where is the intrinsic value inherent in deploying real capital, let's talk real mm -hmm. money here, and putting it into Bitcoin as a storage of value? I get gold for 2,000 years, including the Romans. They saw value in, in, in owning that as an asset class. Tell me why this, which is basically a... Yeah, but like, do you care that's backed up by gold? Or do you care it's bit by, backed by like Bitcoin? Like, I don't give a fuck what it is. I just want the money. You know, I just want the value. Like, I don't think people are thinking about it like that anymore. Especially in our generation, we don't fucking care. We're just like, yo, when moon, when Lambo, you know, that's all we're thinking about. Digital um, game, that's the way I look at it, has any intrinsic value. Would people actually put real money into this? They make no interest. They can't pay their taxes with it. The regulators don't like it, which is always a problem for compliance. And where's the long-term value? Just this this idea that they're going to cut the number of units in half? Sounds like such a scam. <laughs> like, that's just totally BS. Well, we've certainly covered a lot of ground here. From Bitcoin being revolutionary, being extremely viable as an asset, can't be stopped, too big to fail, at just $1,000 in price, now at $10,000 in price, Bitcoin is a total scam and completely useless. I wouldn't be surprised if Kevin O'Leary has tremendous plays in Bitcoin. As we've seen, people are fighting Bitcoin. And don't forget, first they ignore you, then they laugh at you, then they fight you, then you've won. We have to open our eyes to the fact that some of the biggest powers that be are actively fighting against Bitcoin in a way unlike ever before. We've never had a sitting president say anything about Bitcoin. And just a few months ago, we got real Donald Trump on his Twitter saying, I'm not a fan of Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies, which- This is such an interesting video because I can't tell, because I'm being convinced right now by Elio because he's a very good storyteller and he's very good at persuasion techniques in his videos. And I feel like I'm, in a, I'm watching a cult video because like, a, like a, you know, the crypto's a cult. Let's, you know, it is, right? So I feel culty watching this because it's like he, they're fighting against us and like blah, blah, blah. But it's kind of true is the thing. It just, it sounds kind of silly when I think about it too much, but it's so interesting. Like watching Elio's channel is kind of like being in on some secret group. The way he talks about shit is so interesting. And I, lo I love it just from an entertainment pr uh, perspective are not money and whose value is highly volatile and based on thin air. We have to see that right now Bitcoin is in a battleground state. People are actively fighting against this. The biggest powers that be. Mark Cuban to Bill Gates, Kevin O'Leary. These are some of the biggest thought leaders in investing in the country. As well as Donald Trump, a sitting president, now actively chastising Bitcoin. Which means that this movement has gotten to such a size, such a momentum, that some of the biggest powers in the world feel the need to fight against it, which in itself is a tremendous victory for cryptocurrency. Let's not forget about Jamie Dimon, the head of JP Morgan, saying that anyone who buys Bitcoin is stupid and that they're gonna pay the price eventually. Just a few months later, announcing that they're creating their own cryptocurrency for digital payments. Each and every time people are reinvesting. God, it sounds so culty when he says it, but it's facts. It's just facts. That's crazy, bro. People be lying. That's nuts because you think all these people on, on TV, like Kevin and Mark Cuban, all these people that you're like, you're, you'd think they are genuine, you know, and you just don't know. Like, I have no idea if Kevin literally just like did that so he could buy more Bitcoin cheaper or if he was just like heat of the moment. Maybe he really didn't like Bitcoin for some whatever reason. He changed his mind or like what exactly is the real agenda or even is there an agenda in cryptocurrencies? even after they throw Bitcoin under the bus. Remember the saying that first they ignore you, then they laugh at you, then they fight you, and then you've won. Right now, people are fighting Bitcoin, and that is one of the best things that could ever happen for this movement. You see it with Mark Cuban. He's now accepting Bitcoin, even though he's thrown Bitcoin under the bus as useless. This fucking green he's making the decision to accept Bitcoin for the Mavs. You're looking at Kevin O'Leary, who understands Bitcoin, who praised it back in 2013, now seems to not understand it. You're looking at Bill Gates, who loved Bitcoin for banking the unbanked. And now, when he's sitting next to Warren Buffett and Charlie Munger, says it's useless, highly speculative, and a greater fool investment. You're looking at JP Morgan, who says that anyone who buys Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies is stupid and throwing their money away. And now we have JP Morgan coin. Time after time after time, we're seeing the same results. People are bad mouthing Bitcoin in public and then supporting it in private. We also know that JP Morgan formally bought Bitcoin as part of their investment strategy shortly after publicly throwing it under the bus as a stupid bad investment. You see, that you is so fucking illegal. That is so bullshit. That's so unfair. That is so bullshit. Oh, God. 
manipulated. But if you're watching this, and if you're smart enough, you'll have the opportunity to take advantage of the situation. This is what's continuing to happen. And that's why right now might be one of the most pivotal and most- You see how empowered you feel right now watching this video? Do you feel as empowered as I do in the crypto? Like I feel confident right now, I feel good, I feel prepared, I feel ready to go. And that's the way he talks, the way he does his videos. Excellent way if you're if you're like an aspiring YouTuber and you're trying to get followers, this is a great way to do it. You develop that cult like following, that little like, oh man, I'm part of something, you know, like I feel like I'm part of some LU army right now. I feel like he's like hyping us up for war. So just these are just things I'm noticing as a content creator because I, I do implement a couple of these tactics. I'm not nearly as uh, intense with it. I'm just not, I, I want to be. I think it's cool. It's like a storytelling. But anyways. Opportunistic moments in Bitcoin's history. You need to open your eyes to the fact that this is a coordinated effort to FUD and attack Bitcoin. And if you're smart enough to think beyond what people are saying and follow what they're doing with their money, you will be on the front lines, on the bleeding edge of one of the most important monetary revolutions in the world. Thank you for watching. If you guys enjoyed this, please throw a like on the video. Leave a comment in the comment section below. Obviously, I want to shout out Altcoin Daily for bringing the Kevin O'Leary 2013 clip to the forefront. I hope you guys got value from this video. If you did, remember to subscribe. And as usual, I'm Elio Trades, and I'll see you very soon on the next episode of Fuck TV. That's crazy. He said the same song, but the it's I didn't, I didn't know it was called FUD TV back then. That was a cool video. I guess that was uh, that was entertaining for me. That was kind of cool to watch that from a 2019 perspective and knowing what we know now in the market. And that was just a really interesting video, honestly. Ellie, I don't know if you're watching this. Like maybe you are. I, I I don't know why you would be, but if you are, I'd love to do an interview with you, man. I've been interviewing a lot of people in the NFT space. I think it'd be super fun. Get you a little piece of like long form content where we just talk about you and your life. If you're interested, I think it'd be cool. If you want to shoot me a DM on Twitter, I'd be so down. Guys, if you enjoyed yourself. If you learned something if that was cool if you liked it leave a like let me know what you thought down below did i suck did i do what do you want to what do you, what do you want to see from me what do you, what do you want uh, subscribe to the channel bell notification on if you want to see more of me right now click on one of these boxes on the other side of me and until next time continue on your joyage continue to learn and be grateful you're alive watching this video bye